Okay, so in this video here, we're going to do hypothesis testing, also talk about type 1 and type 2 error, and calculate the probability of a type 2 error, which in turn will tell us the power of the test. So take a moment and we'll read this problem together. So a factory produces dishwashers that are known to last 1.5 hours on average per cycle to clean the dishes, with a standard deviation of 0 0.15. A new type has been developed and has claimed the wash dish is faster than the present one. The management is concerned that the cost of, process of, of the, the cost of the process producing the new type of dishwashers is more expensive than the traditional method. They can justify shifting to the new, new process only if they have evidence that the new dishwashers do actually wash dishes faster than 1.5 hours. Hence, the time is shorter. So it's faster, the time is going to be shorter. For that purpose, a random sample of 25 new dishwashers was tested, and the mean time to wash the dishes was 1.45. Before we do any hypothesis testing, we can find out the type 1 and type 2 errors. Well, the type 1 error, well, that's if we reject the null hypothesis, which would mean that we say that the dishwashers are actually more efficient when in fact they are not. And so the implications of that is they uh, spend money on the new dish on the new process and advertise that it's faster and advertise faster faster times yet it is not true. Okay, so they spend money on the process of of making these dishwashers not true. The type 2 error happens if we do not reject the null hypothesis, but we should have done so. So if that's the case, well then it is a missed opportunity. We could have had the dishwasher, we could have been making all this extra money on new dishwashers, making this new process, but we didn't do it. And so, um, and so there's a missed opportunity to make money, to make a profit. So no extra profit. That's the implication of the type 2 error. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to jump to E part first. And the reason why I'm going to jump to E part first is because I do not have to do the hypothesis test to do figure out the probability of a type 2 error. And it's really important. You do not use any of this information here, the fact that you have a new, uh, you have a mean. You use, you do this, you can calculate the type 2 error before you carry out the experiment or the this uh, uh, quality control idea. Okay, and so if we're going to find out if I have a type 2 error, well, let's first come along and consider. I got a graph down here. If we consider this scenario, I know it says that the factory produces 1.5. This is 1.5 hours. This is the standard normal curve. And I'm going to move this away for now. And I will reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level. Okay, I'll reject it at 5% level. So somewhere here, okay, I have an area here where this is 0.05%. Now, for this particular scenario, I want to find this is Z star, I know. And if I do inverse normal to find out that in the Z value, I area of 0 0.05, yada, yada, yada. We get Z star, in this case, is equal to negative 1.645. But I also want to find the actual Z score that would correspond to this uh, value. Okay, oh, not the Z score, sorry. I want to find the actual X bar if I would do this experiment, that would correspond to this value. So I know that I can go z is equal to x bar minus mu 
over the standard deviation over root n. And I'm doing z because I know the standard deviation of the population. It's the same situation if I do not know z, I would use t. So finding this x bar, I know this is negative 1.645 equal to x bar minus 1.5 is my mu. 1.5 is mu, I'll write that down. Standard deviation, I know 0 0.1215 and n is equal to 25. I have to know the setup of my experiment, like n, before I can do this calculation. So I'm going to divide by 0 0.15 divided by the root of 25, which I know is 5. And when I do that calculation, looking at my calculator here, I did it earlier, I get 1.45065. So this value here is 1.45 approximately. Okay, so that's an important value to be able to calculate. But to do a type 2 error, that means that this value is actually incorrect and that there must be a value for the mean that is actually true. So the actual true value of the normal curve should look like this. And I'm going to, someone believes that it's 1.42 hours. And so this value here is 1.4 is this mean here. And so the mean here, well, if I want to find out the probability of a type 2 error, well, I'm going to switch colors here. That's going to happen if it lands in this region here of the graph. Because I, if I would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let me back up here for a second. Type 2 error happens when I fail to reject the null hypothesis when I should have. And so it means the statistic will fit in this region here. And so the probability of it falling in that region here is actually the region here because 1.42 is the true value of the mean of this dishwasher. And so this area here in red is my probability of a type 2 error. So to find that probability, what I do then, I want to find the probability, excuse me, that x bar is bigger than 1.45065. And that is when I have x is normal it is a normal curve with 1.42. This is the mean. The standard deviation is still the same over root 25. And so if I do this calculation now, I'm going to do a second distributions. I'm going to do my normal CDF. I'm starting from 1.45065. My upper is going to be a big number. My mean is 1.42. My standard deviation is 0.15. Divide by the root of 25. And this probability is then 0.153. And so my probability of a type 2 error is 15%. This is beta. Similar, then this probability here in purple, which is 1 minus beta, this is the power of the test. So the power of the test is 1 minus 0 0.153 minus 1, and I get is going to be 0 0.847 is the power of the test. And so I want to make very clear that you can calculate type 2 error without, having, without knowing this value here. You 
can assume you've not done, and actually statisticians do this calculation because they want this to be large, the power of the test to be large, before they do the, find out the results. They have the setup of the experiment, they know what n is going to be, and they know what this value is, but they do not know your sample. They do need to know what they believe, different from the null hypothesis, the true mean is. Then you can calculate type 2. All right, so we are going to finish it off with our hypothesis testing and analyzing B, C, B, C, and D, and E. I will clone this page somehow. So, doing B part now. So, doing B part now, I'm going to do enough F is 5% level to justify the shift the new process. Well, I know that X bar is 1.45. I'm going to write the numbers out. Mu is 1.5. Standard deviation is 0 0.15. N is 25. I am going to do a one sample Z test because I know the standard deviation of the population. And so my null hypothesis says that mu equals 1.5, whereas my alternative hypothesis, well, I want it to be faster. I want the mu to be faster so the time is less. I'm not caring about if it's bigger than 1.5. I want it to be less than 1.5. I type it into my formula, x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. And when I do that, I get my z to b. And let's do our test, sat, test. It's a z test. I have statistics. My mean my mu is 1.5. Standard deviation, 0.15. X bar, 1.45. N is 25. I want it to be less than mu. And so I'm going to calculate that. So Z should be 1.666. And my p-value is equal to 0 0.0478. So based upon that, and I have my normal curve here, here is 1.5, this is alpha, z star. My particular calculation is here, here is z. It is in the critical region. I like to think about the p-value is less than alpha, so it's small, p-value is small, therefore we reject H0 and claim strong evidence that the new dishwashers, and we always make our conclusion in the context of the problem. Strong evidence of the new dishwashers are faster. Okay, so that's our hypothesis testing. So now, in this case, what type of error may have occurred? Well, the probability, the error of uh, reject the null hypothesis we shouldn't have, this is called a type 1 error. Because in this region here, that means a type 1 error. The probability of a type 1 error is equal to alpha, in this case 0 0.05. Okay, I hope that helps.